Good morning, everyone. I'm Mr. Schlieff. I'm your Media Center Supervisor. I have the fun job of buying books for you and of helping you with your technology problems. Thank you again for all those who took my Media Center survey. Today is your last day. And today I have the great privilege of leading worship. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One thing all of you will probably face if you haven't already is a job description. When you apply for a job, the company usually gives you a document. On that document, you'll see different things like the qualifications you'll need for that job, the responsibilities you have, who you'll report to, and what you'll be paid for. When I applied here at FEL, I was given my very own FEL job description. Here you'll see things like committed to Christian education, have a college degree, have knowledge or experience with technology or education. I'll be reporting to the technology director and the principal. When you apply for a job, you'll see something very similar to this. In our reading for today, Jesus gives us two job descriptions, one for himself as our Savior and one for his disciples. From Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 and 26. Just before our reading, Peter had declared Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of the living God. This is what we read on Monday. This was a high point for the disciples. They were confident that Jesus was their Savior. Now, Jesus wanted to explain to his disciples what it really meant that he was the Savior, his job description. From Matthew chapter 16. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. In Jesus' job description, he had to go to Jerusalem. There he would not be crowned as king, but instead he would suffer. He would suffer at the hands of the Jewish religious leaders. And eventually in Jerusalem, Jesus would die. Later he would be raised to life. But all these things were God's will. They all needed to happen. They all had to be done. When Peter heard this, he was so surprised that he took Jesus aside. This couldn't happen. This, this wasn't the way it was supposed to work. Peter was Jesus' friend. He didn't want Jesus to suffer. He especially didn't want him to die. The disciples had pictured a future of glory and victory as Jesus' right-hand men. If Jesus were to die, that wouldn't be victory. That would be the disciples' greatest defeat. Don't we often think like Peter? We want life to be good. We want to be happy and successful. We don't want to be in pain. We especially don't want to suffer. The problem comes when we put our human concerns ahead of God's concerns. Look at how Jesus addressed Peter. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. What a strong rebuke. Peter totally misunderstood what the Messiah was supposed to do. By putting his own agenda before God's, Peter was tempting Jesus to sin. He was tempting Jesus to give up on the cross and to be our Savior. Jesus took this opportunity to teach his disciples what it really meant to follow him. We continue reading. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? To be a disciple of Jesus doesn't mean we can't ever splurge or have fun. 
Here we see the job description of being a disciple really is to put Jesus first. Unlike Peter, we don't put our agenda ahead of God's. Instead, we listen to our God. We humbly listen to him and do what he says. We deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. So let me ask you, what is your cross? What in your life is more difficult because you follow Jesus? Is there a specific temptation you're struggling with? Is there a teaching in the Bible that just doesn't sit well with you? Or when you look at your Christian life or what God is asking of us, you've given up on the cross entirely. Whatever your cross is, I can't promise you it'll get easier. After your time at FEL, you'll be facing a world that hates Jesus and those who follow him. This sinful world rejected our Savior, spat on his face, and nailed him to a heavy, heavy cross. As his disciples, we are volunteering for the same sentence. Jesus gave the job description of a disciple, to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. As you look at this job description, are you willing to be a disciple? My comfort for you today is that no matter how long you've been carrying your cross or have failed to carry your cross, is that it's worth it. Whatever you suffer because of Jesus, it's worth it. It's worth it because we don't have to carry our cross to be saved. We carry our crosses because we're already saved. Jesus already went to Calvary. Jesus already beat the devil. Jesus already won for us life forever in heaven. There is nothing more that we need to, be, need to do to be saved. Jesus did it all already for us. Looking at what this world has to offer, it doesn't compare to what we already have in Jesus. The day that you were baptized, you became a child of God. You became an heir of all the riches and glories of heaven. And right now, you enjoy peace with God and the forgiveness of your sins. This world wants to drag us down, but what you have in Jesus is worth fighting for. As we look at the job description of being a disciple, it can be hard. When we look at the temptations and the struggles, we can struggle with those. But we have hope, because no matter how often we failed in following Jesus, Jesus never failed in his job of being our Savior. In God's word, we see that his concerns are so much better than anything we could imagine for ourselves. It's Jesus who won for us life forever in heaven. It's Jesus who gives us the strength to carry our cross. And it's his face we'll see when we reach our blessed end. Amen. We continue with our hymn.
Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive us for the times we have put our concerns before yours, and forgive us for the times we have been unwilling to carry our crosses. Remind us that your love and your grace remind us that you have already finished the work of saving us. Thank you for being with us in all our struggles, and give us the strength to bravely and humbly follow you. In your name we pray, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.